Hey guys, Dale Walker at Whole Shot. I'm back with Mr. Green here. Uh, the weather's hanging in there. I'm actually going to go out and uh, do a little test run with the uh, new wave rotors tomorrow. But I just reset my sag numbers. I rechecked them since I put some hard miles on it now. So <clears throat> I'm not going to do any adjustments. I'm just going to go over real quickly. So I got a sag gauge. You have your your rear axle that's a hollow, okay? You want to have somebody, you want to lift up the bike, take all the tension off the shock, and then put a piece of tape, zeroed out. I'm doing this by myself, so you can't really tell now, but that's zeroed when the bike's pulled up. Okay, and then you want to put the bike straight up and down. You want to sit on the bike. Um, maybe have a buddy. You don't have to really put your feet on the pegs. I would throw your jacket, maybe just your helmet is good enough on the tank and just lightly bounce up and down, just barely. And um, if you're a lighter rider, let's just put it this way. If you're under uh, 180 pounds and down, I would set the rear sag uh, at uh, right at about 40 millimeters. I ran 42 for a little while and uh, it's a little more than I normally run but I like that because it sucks up the bumps a lot better on the street makes it more compliant. Uh, I'm, I just snugged it up just a little to 40 which is going to do nothing but so I just give you a teeny bit more ground clearance. Um, if you're a bigger guy say you're 220 or something if you can get less uh, sag uh, I would shoot for uh, about 35 rider sag. So when you sit on it and you lightly load the seat with the bike straight up and down, just on your tippy toes, you can kind of balance or you can have a buddy hold the end of the handlebars for you so your feet can be on the pegs. You want to have the number come from zero with the shock fully extended down to four, around 40 if you're a lighter guy and around 35 if you're a heavier guy. Okay, so you just break loose the little spanner nuts here. Actually, it's hard to get a wrench in there. If you do have a special wrench, you can use it, but it's kind of tight. A large flat blade screwdriver works fine if you take your time. You're not going to butcher it up. Break the, break the lock ring loose. It's counterclockwise. You're going to knock this down. Break it all the way loose and unthread it. And then put a felt pen mark on one of the tabs. And you're going to tighten this ring up just a little at a time. From the fact that it's really soft, I mean, my bike was at about 55 millimeters. It's like doing a wheelie. It's totally ridiculous. So you want to tighten that up, recheck it, top the bike out, sit on it, check your numbers, and go for the numbers that I told you. Okay, just keep tightening it up. When you get the number, uh, don't tighten the ring yet, <coughs> and then go to the front. So the front, you can put the bike on the side stand, and you can kind of lift up on the on the bike, see, and get top that out. And when that's topped out, you're going to push the nylon tie, snug nylon tie, all the way against the seal with it topped out. Okay, and with it topped out, have your buddy hold it. You don't have to lift the wheel on the ground off the ground, but you want the fork stretched out. You're going to measure from the bottom of the nylon tie to the bottom of the fork right here on this lip, and make a note of it. Okay, same deal. Then you. Push it up again, get on the bike, straight up and down, just lightly kind of bounce it, just a teeny little bit, not a lot, okay? Because you want your rider's static stag, uh, excuse me, stag, your rider's sag, okay? And I would shoot for right around 37 millimeters. It's uh, 37 to 40 or 37 and 35 in the back if you're a big guy. So after you sit on it, it's going to be pushed down. You can get off the bike. Then you're going to measure. You know, it's going to be down here somewhere. You're going to measure between here and here, right? And you want to shoot for that push down from topped out with the fork stretched, 37 millimeters. That's what I'd try. Feels really good on my bike. It's uh, stable. It doesn't dive too much. And then you can play with your dampening adjustments only. That should be a really good ballpark just for your static sag. So... Just a real quickie here, because I'm going riding tomorrow, I re-checked re it. My front stayed the same, 
it's within a half a millimeter. I didn't touch it. The rear shock, I had it 42. It was about the same, 43. I brought it to 40 now. And I touched the side stand on the when I really ride it hard. I barely touched the side stand on one corner. So I'm raising it up just a smidge, but not enough to change the uh, being too stiff or anything. So, all right. Okay, well, I hope this helps you uh, set your sag numbers, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.